I also remember from the first year that the tax issue was a big issue in your first year. Um, you had wanted to hike one tax mm -hmm. and the democratically controlled yeah. legislature had said, no, that's not the tax we're going to make you hike. Yeah, that's Is that right. correct? Yeah, yeah. It's a, Can you um, tell that story? Yeah, uh, it was, um, we had, i say, this was a terrible recession we were in. And um, now it seems fashionable always to say that whenever you have a recession, it's the previous governor's fault. But I, never, I don't know if they ever blamed it on Brendan, but, but we had uh, a billion dollar deficit, which in those days was a lot of money. I don't know what it would be equivalent to now, but three billion or something, I don't know. But it was a huge deficit and growing. And I remember Ken Biederman would come into my office about once a week and he'd say, we're down another 150 million. Or we're down another 200 million. And it just seemed like drip, 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 no matter what we did, the state was going. And it was not just, it wasn't, it wasn't the budget that we were working on. It was the previous year's budget that wasn't in balance anymore. So we not only had to come up with money for um, next year's budget, we had to come up with that year's budget. And so I met with a number of people on the problem, and and, and it was uh, and and the I had one I, I, had, I had one choice, uh, two choices rather. We either had to find some new revenue, or we had to cut aid to the schools, because that is as it is now. That was that's a major portion of the budget. So we we cut. I had a whole. I mean, I, I had we did every economy we could. I, I started something called the Governor's Management Improvement Commission. The Governor's Management Improvement yeah. Plan, GMIP. GMIP. And, 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 and for GMIP, the idea was it was headed by the leading CEOs in the state. The head of Johnson & Johnson, uh, the chairman of Johnson Johnson, the chairman of, uh, I think then it was uh, uh, the company in Newark that was huge then, like a Bob Van Fossen. Mutual, mutual benefit, benefit monthly like. benefit. There's a third one, but anyways, the top CEOs, and then they got the other CEO. So the whole business community bought into it. Was Al Fasola your yes. man in charge? Yes, Al of was that? the guy in charge of that. And uh, the idea was that they would send people in. The business community would donate people to every single government department and agency, and and they would work. I don't know, it was six months, I don't know how long it was, but I would work in that agency. At the same time, everything would be made transparent. So we'd turn over the whole budget to this group of CEOs and their staffs and everything else and for their suggestions. And um, at the same time, on the other side of it, we had a number of top state workers who went and worked for the private sector for those six months. The idea was for an exchange. And that worked enormously well. I mean, the, 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 um, the, the state employees learned a tremendous amount. The, um, I remember the CEO saying, you know, well, people tell me, you know, those were really good people. We didn't know you. you know, they, they didn't understand how good state employees were, you know, how able these people were. And so it was, that worked well on both sides. Uh, and they did. They came up with a long report. Now, some of it was totally impractical because they didn't take into account things like contracts and <laughs> the kind of things that business doesn't always have to deal with, but that we do in state government. And there were some things that were impractical because looking at the legislatures, you know, there weren't three votes for them. Uh, but others, yeah, we saved a lot of money. I don't remember what the exact amount was, but there was a lot of money that was saved by that report. But I wanted to do that first because I wanted to, until you had done that, and really gone over the state budget and said, you know, we've looked at it with a fine-tooth comb. These are the savings you can make. Uh, you couldn't go ask anybody for new revenues. And, uh, but once we had done that, uh, and the recession was still deepening, um, that was just two choices. I mean, you either could have will whack at state aid to schools. And I'd run on education. It was one of the things I'd run on. I wasn't going to do that. And or you find new sources of revenue. So my first choice was because I thought the recession wasn't going to last that long. I was hoping, and and that we could come out the other side if we 
did some basic taxes that one can, of course, like every governor, I, I thought the gasoline tax was too low because uh, it was so much lower than all the states around us. So I recommended that. And then a couple of minor taxes, I think, to raise liquor, I think, maybe. And, oh, was it a nickel hike in the gas tax? Yeah, call? something like that. I don't know what it was. But it was enough, you know, if we put all these small taxes together, it was enough to get the budget passed. Legislature wouldn't buy that. Uh, they wanted me to do the major taxes. And Politics? They wanted, they wanted to force the yeah, Republican they want, governor yes. to hike the income and the sales yes. tax? Yeah, well, and mainly the income tax, because they knew, they knew I really wanted to keep that low. Because I'd made the deal with Brendan Byrne originally, uh, as leader of the Republicans in the legislature, that, uh, that we were going to have an income tax, but the rate was going to be lower than the states around us. And there wouldn't be exemptions, <laughs> because I thought rich people had always took advantage of exemptions. So that was a deal that I worked out with Brendan. and, and, and um, In 76. Yeah, and, and I said, all right, if you agree to that, then I'm going to free up Republicans who want to vote for it and vote for it and protect them, which I did. <laughs> So against so revenge. Now we're in '82. Yeah, and, and and who were the leaders at the time? Uh, uh, Alan Karcher, and I think maybe Carmen Arecchio in the Senate. Right. Yeah. And so they rallied their majorities. It was to mainly, force you yeah. to, to force you to hike the. It was, the other it was, it was mainly Alan Karcher. I think uh -huh. Carmen Arecchio was an old friend of mine from Essex County, but but the uh, and they actually people forget this. They actually, legislature actually passed a graduated income tax and sent it to me. To that point, it had been a flat rate tax? Not flat, but three and a half top rate or something to, uh -huh. to one and a half or something. It was, a, it was graduated, but not much. And they made it more graduated? Or oh, they yeah, they, the top rate. yeah, they sent me a, you know, it was a, I don't know, it was, I don't know, it was a big increase in the rates. So you conditionally vetoed and, that? No, I totally vetoed it. No. <laughs> in fact, I vetoed it. I sent it back within the same hour they sent it to me. And uh, so that was stalemate. And then, of course, when, what happens then, you start the negotiations. Who and negotiated for you? You or somebody, or your staff? I think I did a lot of it. I'm sure Kerry was involved. He was involved in everything. But I was, I was, I had to do that one, really, basically. And uh, my memory is conscious. Common was fine, but you couldn't do anything without an income tax increase. As far as as far as Alan was involved, was Alan that Kodger. ideology? Was that politics? I think a little bit of both. I mean, he, he really they really wanted me to sign an income tax increase, and so we finally negotiated, 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 and finally I agreed to a what well, amounted to a very small increase in both the income and the sales tax. And so um, I said I'd sign it, but I didn't like it. And it wasn't what I would have done. And I said I was going to say that publicly. So when they sent me the bill, I signed it. Do you remember what month we might be in? Or uh, we're, we're probably in your first year as governor, yeah, I think 1982. So. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Spring? Uh, probably spring. I don't, yeah. I don't remember exactly. But, the, uh, but I remember I signed it holding my nose. Literally, holding, yes, yes, literally holding my nose. It's and, famous that you said, yeah. "I'm going to hold my nose and yes. sign it," but I wasn't sure whether that was rhetoric or whether you literally. I literally held my nose, <laughs> and I said to them, "I said when I signed it, I said, look, I don't think this recession is going to last forever, and when this state comes back, as it will, uh, I will promise you that we're going to decrease taxes." And, and. The staff thought that I'd finished myself by signing that, you know, that I'd signing a tax increase. And there was no movement in the polls whatsoever. I didn't go up, but I didn't go down. I, didn't, I wasn't very high anyway that way. I was about where I was when I ran. But I didn't go down, didn't go up. What does that say to you? That taxes aren't as, I mean, if you explain to people, I mean, we, we, there's been enough debate. People understood the terrible problem the state was in. I made it clear that the choice was the school kids or the tax. I made it clear I didn't like it, and I made it clear I was going to get rid of it or not get rid of it, at least decrease taxes the first opportunity I got. And people bought it. <laughs>